his mom and dad or so, like are somewhere close or whatever and it just picked up his picked up their voices and but the funny thing was was that another part of me hoped that it was you that just wasn't in frame watching me fuck my pillow <laughs> no that was that was just for me that was, that was <laughs> real that was real special y'all don't understand i walked into the double d experience podcast today and I saw triple, my man Dennis. The triple X edition. The triple X edition. <laughs> and I saw Dennis on all fours on his bed. And as soon as I walked into the frame, uh. he started making sweet love to that pillow in a way utmost I've never seen before. What's funny is I was trying to make you laugh. Like, I was splashed cold water on my face before we yeah. started because I was fucking tired. Because I took a hot bath and it relaxed me too much. Mm -hmm. And so I was trying to... When I was splashing the water on my face, I don't think you heard me. I was screaming a lot. Oh! <laughs> yeah, I was I, like... I, I, I really couldn't hear you. I was like that dude in the anime. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, how do you like my swimming? <laughs> <laughs> like, that was me, basically. Bro, that clip is amazing. Yeah, uh, welcome to the Double D Experience, everybody. Matt, yeah, anime's is name star. is anime's name is Golden Boy, by the way. But, Golden um, Boy, yeah, definitely yeah. go watch Golden Boy. The only Golden Boy in front of me right now is this young lad right here, trying to turn me on before we start the podcast, thrusting into that pillow. Jesus, boy, what are you doing there, boy? I fucked my body pillow so much that it stands on its own right now. <laughs> <laughs> my my wife who's coming to life. <laughs> my wife who's coming to life. <laughs> I live uh. in my mom's house. I'm like 32. <laughs> Is your mic good? Everything okay? Yeah, yeah, there? it's all good. Yep. All right, welcome to the Double D Experience, guys. Uh, sometimes thrusting, sometimes fucking, but always making sweet love to those pillows. But always making a baby. This is why we don't use webcams for the shows. Dennis is naked, like, literally, like, a solid 75% of the time I'll that we record. And I'll now he actually <laughs> fucked something on camera. And <laughs> So we're we're in the end game now. Yeah, I guess so. We're, we're in the end game, and I, I guess also it's we're in the end game of the pregame, which will then create the post game. Yes. Uh, also, I guess <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I really had to like think about that for a second. I, was like, I mean, oh, in light of at least the fact that we're T minus, you know, seven days Ooh, technically. Oh, I wasn't even thinking. Yo, fucking sick segue, bro. Mm. Dude, like, your, segue, your segues have gotten so broken since starting this podcast. Like, I've watched you I'm, get just so tier busted. Zero. Just tier I, zero. You are tier... No, 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 I'm tier zero, motherfucker. You never no, heard I'm me not. commentate Smash. My segues are fucking... My, I think, my I, think I, could, I think I could commentate pretty well in Smash. I think you would be great at it. Give me, like, 30 minutes of just knowing all the terms, and then I'll <laughs> probably... Yeah. I'll run all of you motherfuckers out of town, I swear to God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, mean, I imagine. <laughs> oh, man. You, you would Bold be... Bold-ass claims That's coming a... from you, Mr. Naked Man. <laughs> Mr. He that Who would... Fucks Pillow. The world would not be able to handle you and me on a fucking Smash stream. I think, honestly, though, the way that, like, I also yell, my voice would be shot after, like, one fucking... Nah, uh, you'd be fine. No, I need I, to know. I yell a lot, and I'm fine. I need not, I need to know like your techniques that you do to like right. kind of keep the voice like fresh. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like techniques and smash. So I was about to say like, okay, so the green button make the character go poonch, and then the the tiny little red button below it make him go pew pew pew. With See, the guys, fireball. this is David's way of trying to hurt. Me, but as you know, for me, words don't hurt me. I'm not making fun of you. Like they're fucking like actual grown ass men who is just grab a menace. the button. David is a menace. I was he should even he has fun to, of you. He has to be stopped. I literally was. He not started even the January. He started the January sixth riots. I mean that's facts, but like that has nothing to do <laughs> with like it was all it was all an do. elaborate ploy to get all these dumb fucks arrested and Yuck finally it. knowing who is truly the most autistic of us all. <laughs> Y'all can't see me, but I have a mustache right now. I am Mike Lindell. And I and unlike this guy, I don't fuck my pillow. Hey, man, the pillow. Is Yo, you want to see? You want to talk about my segways? I just made the most. That was busted as fuck. I didn't understand it. Oh, you fucking serious? Wait, who's actually Mike Lindell? He Mike, familiar. do you have you ever seen those commercials with the guy with the mustache? And my pillow will give you the money back guarantee. That it's a brand called My Pillow. Oh. 
Yeah. Oh, uh, but you dude. don't got that mustache yet. No, 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 Dennis. It was a broken segue because that fucking dude was at the insurrection. Oh. Yeah, there's footage of him and everything, oh. and he like publicly defends Trump like all the time now. And I made a joke about how at least I don't fuck my pillow. <laughs> David, this is how yeah, you see, know. laugh it off, because you know that no, was No, 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 I'm laughing it off. I'm not, well, no, I'm not laughing it off. I'm laughing. Can't even be- call me maidenless anymore, you fucking naked fuck. Why, why are we bringing up ancient history now? <laughs> ancient history? This was like three hours ago. That, that is ancient history, dude. I don't oh even remember, God. I don't even remember what I had for breakfast yesterday. <laughs> it's like, fucking, might as well be 20 years ago. I can't even remember my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm uh, giving it all she's got, Captain. She can't take any more. If Dennis is ever just like fucking his girl, uh, and for whatever reason he forgets I'm in the house, I'm just downstairs. He just doesn't care because he's so fucking horny. I'm like Dennis, are, are you are you screaming? Are you all right in there? He's like, I'm giving it all she's got, Captain. <laughs> she can't take any more. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> our point is both our segues are broken. We'd be great. I would love to teach you about proper proper vocal. It's easy to like warm up your voice. I was taught by Paul Liberty, who I've mentioned millions of times on this show. It was like like class fucking triple S tier voice actor. Mm-hmm. Um, he's been in a ton of shit that you've watched, and uh, he was the one who taught me how to warm up my voice properly. My voice used to hurt so much after every Smash broadcast, and that's because I never took care of it properly. And mm-hmm. it's not even a matter of doing, like, just singing scales or whatever. It's not even that. Like, it's a very simple way to do it with just, like, very basic breathing techniques. Mm-hmm. And then I literally felt, like, my fucking throat, like, open up more, better. And, like, I was like, how? Oh! Like, I'm, like I'm, all of a sudden, my voice was way more resonant when I wanted mm-hmm. it to be, like, way more... And, and it wouldn't hurt afterwards. Like, I'd be able to just go on and on and on. I used to do it every time before we started the podcast. Like, literally every time. And, no, um, not so much no more? Not so much just because I'm lazy. And, and, like, I just... And I'm forgetful. And that's why whenever, like, I do, like, character voice impressions sometimes that are too high, I won't be able to reach it and my voice will crack. And in the yeah. times where I was able to reach it, it's because I did that shit beforehand. Mm. It's very easy. I've told, I've told Smash commentators I was going to teach them in this group chat that we were in on Discord or whatever, but I never got around to making that video. So, it's, it's pretty easy. As far as Smash terms, like, I'm grown-ass men, describe it the way I did. Green button, make the character go, <laughs> and then the red button, make them go, pew, 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 and then the gray buttons make them go, ha, and then the gray buttons at the top make them put their hands in front of their face with the blockity blocks. And that is the official fighting game term, by the way, blockity blocks. So you're, uh, there's a lesson one for you right there, fucko. Why did you go from making it educational to just basically accosting me? Because you accosted me. When? Three hours ago when you called. Well, I'm not bringing that shit up again. I'm sorry. Okay, we're done. Okay, <laughs> let's like, actually... Why are you again? Why are you bringing up ancient history, man? <laughs> shit was 20 years ago. The, the fucking historian is going to sit here and tell me that three hours ago <laughs> was ancient history. An actual historian just told me that. Bro, now I've seen everything, kids. Bro, my perception of time is honestly so fucked ever since I started getting up when it's still dark out. <laughs> Like I don't know how you do that, man. I, I it's just built in me. Like I just think I'm just more inclined to just like kind of get up early in the morning. I think, kind of maybe a bit of it started when um, like it's just like my <coughs> what the fuck, like my parents kind of like instilled it into me like uh, when I was young, like mm. get up early, uh, basically just to get a good jump on your day, like that kind of stuff, but. Mm-hmm. Cause like I, I've like tried to sleep in, and the thing is, my brain like says, "Okay, you'll sleep in," but you know how like classically, like people when they think sleeping in, they think like, "Oh, like till two two p.m. or three mm-hmm. p.m." My day, my idea of sleeping in is like ten a.m. If I sleep in any time in the like middle afternoon, like all the way to like one. Or mm-hmm. some shit. I just feel like such a piece of shit. <laughs> like you I, I really do. Degenerate. I do too. Like I, yeah, you, I do you too. Asshole! Holy shit! You're already unproductive as fuck, and now like you just slept in till like one. Yeah. Which by oh my god, yeah. Like dude, I'm surprised my sleep schedule isn't fucked because like I'm the opposite of you. Mm-hmm. I mean, my sleep schedule is fucked, but like I'm and then like I'm the opposite of you in the sense that like I even if I try to wake up early, unless there's something I have to be at, 
Mm -hmm. Like, it's the sake of somebody else. Like, I have some career counseling coming up on Wednesday that I, um, stupidly decided to do in person instead of over a Zoom call. So, like, I actually have to go to Montclair now. And, uh, now I'm gonna have to wake up for that. And, um, unless it's, like, something like that, I can't just get up and out early. It's not good. Mm -hmm. Even, like, in some jobs that I've had where we're just menial, shitty jobs or whatever, like, I eventually just start getting there, like, either late or right at the fucking cutoff just because mm. I know that I can once I get my schedule in and up away from it. And it sucks because, like, my inner voice can be... It can be, like, a little... Not cr a little, little cruel. So it'll be like, no, get there early. Do this. Like, you know, like, yeah. be productive so you'll feel productive. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm just not like that at all. Like, I literally got downstairs today, I think, at, like, noon. And that's been a regular occurrence for me for, like, these last couple of weeks. Until mm -hmm. I eat then. And I want to do that earlier because, again... If you're, like, out of bed any time after noon... Like, after, like, the clock yeah. hits 12... Mm -hmm. I'm just like, yo, you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been bad recently because mm -hmm. um, HDR is this new mod of Smash Brothers that's been re like rampaging through Tri-State recently. It's like basically mm -hmm. a mod of Smash Ultimate to like just some quality of life changes. Like there's wave dashing, like different like buffer system and all this stuff. And it's taking Tri-State by storm right now. And that game is like turning me into a degenerate smasher again. And it's not good. It's the <laughs> worst time of my life to be a degenerate <laughs> smasher. I picked the worst time of my life to start um, to start seeing somebody. <laughs> And to get back into Smash Brothers, like, regularly, when I don't have a fucking job. Dennis, I went to Helix, uh, the Helix Esports Center, to uh -huh. play with my friends who were there at the end of a local that happened that night. I mm -hmm. got there at 9. <laughs> what time did you leave? Take, take a guess at when I got home. Single digits for sure, then. Single digits at least. 5 a.m. Oh, not that bad, Jesus. Okay, oh, uh... <laughs> 2 a.m. Not that good. 4? Not that bad. 3. A little later. 3.30. Oh, yes. And then, only like two days later, I got to my friend <laughs> Hungry's place. Yo, know, maybe it's just <laughs> like the old local. man in me. But anytime I hear people literally fucking say that, oh yeah, I was out till like 2, 3 a.m. in the morning... And everything, I'm just like, don't y'all get tired? <laughs> Dude, it's so like, bad. Like, I'm actually, like, just genuinely, like, I don't know, some weirdly, like, concerned for their health. Because it's like, don't y'all get tired? Like, like Dude, I don't, like, you know, like. It was after Korean barbecue one day with all my boys. And we, mm. went, to, we went to their place, uh, like, just to play the game again. And again, I didn't get home until fucking four. Like, my God, I just, it's turning oh, me into such man. a degenerate smasher. That's why I'm, like, not, all I've been doing for, like, the last two days is just working on, like, my new resume. I'm like, David, holy shit, you've been putting this off for days. Yeah. Stop. Like, my God. And I can discipline myself enough, but the point is, is that my sleep schedule is, like, the opposite of yours. It's 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 crazy how that works. How do you get up when the sun... I, that's like a trippy for me. Getting up when the sun is not out yet, I don't like that. It gives me anxiety. I, I'm, I've never been a fan of that. You know, I've heard Like, that I know the sun is our mortal enemy, but... Like <laughs> <laughs> I, I've heard that many times from people where, like, when they get up and they... If they get up and they, like, literally see, like, no sun, like, outside, it really does fuck with them. And for me, it's like... I don't know what it is, like, maybe, like, movies kind of inspired me, um, you know, like, how a lot of times, like, the dude, like, has, like, a montage where, like, he gets up early in the morning, he has his 12 dozen eggs to, don't before- Don't get me started. Yeah, like, it, it, like, the workout montages. Stupid, rich man mentality, like, hustling No, mentality. not even, no, it's not even that, like, not even hustling like that, it's just kind of, like, just even, like, going- to jog at like 5 a.m. in the morning. There's some psychos that do that. And that for me is just kind of like, well, okay, I'm going to just come clean. I hate running. <laughs> right. I fucking despise running. Like cardio is the enemy for me. It's probably the reason why my lower gut is probably as protruding as it is, at least for my body frame. And, cause like the rest of me is skinny, but then like as soon as you like your eyes scroll down a bit, it's just kind of like, oh, what's that? <laughs> that also just happens to men as they age. Yeah, I know. Like I'm, I'm reaching that like twilight years of thirty. I'm gonna die in twenty. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you haven't seen my gut, dude. 
Like, if no, like, I've I, seen if you I'm good. bloated, if I'm bloated, I, like, it was when we went out to eat a couple times, and I saw your stomach afterwards. I saw, I like literally. I, people don't know this. Like, I kind of just always like. Sounds like kind of weird, I guess. I kind of look at people's like stomachs just to see, like, did you eat good or did you not? Because if a person's still skinny after eating a fucking huge ass meal, I'm like, you didn't eat then. That's strangely like, you paternal. Ain't eating. You ain't eating. Yeah, that's strangely like, paternal of you. I gotta this, say. This is also like. Adding to that, like, I don't know, like, I, every time I've had, like, people come over, like, I always just, like, like to make food and, you know, get them so fucking full that they pass out on my fucking couch. Like, they, it's, like, gotten, like, it's gotten to, like, that point sometimes where, like, I don't know, I guess I also learned that from my uh, grandma. I don't know, maybe, I don't know, like, I kind of learned a lot of shit growing up and it kind of just always stuck with me. Because, like, my right. grandma, like, always told me, like, oh, you're full? Here's a, here's a fourth portion. And I just have to sit there and eat it because it's like, you know, I'm not going to not eat something from my grandma. Yeah, completely it, ignoring the fact that, like, you're on the ground. You're like, oh. Yeah, I know. It's, it's just like, at that point, you need a tube in my mouth to fucking feed that shit into me. Like, it's, it's, it got so, it got pretty bad sometimes. And, like, I had a fucking prying crank to get you, like, back up. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, ee, 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 ee. like, my stomach. I, I think also people, like, underestimate, like, uh, Koreans, like, as far as how much they can eat. Like, at a given time. Because, I mean, like, for anyone who's, like, listening to this and they're not Korean and you've been to a Korean barbecue, just imagine. They don't eat this every day, by the way. They don't go out to fucking eat, like, truckloads of fucking red meat and ingest it every day. Yeah, it's not but like it's like, friends. but, like, one night of going to Korean barbecue is good for, like, two, three weeks. Like, you don't, it's not something, like, you do every day. And, like, just the amount of fucking red meat you ingest in there. Like, I think any doctor would be fucking horrified Can I hearing how much red meat you fucking eat. Like, in, in in any, like, given time. Like, it's actually nuts, like, how much you eat over there. And can I, Yeah, can I tell you something? Yeah. I had Korean barbecue the other night. My yeah. boys go pretty often. Like, they go, like, once a week. And they tried to okay. go after that, uh, that HDR regional that happened, and I really did not want to. <laughs> Thank God it was already, like, 1230, and, like, they were at last call, so, like, mm -hmm. I just went to Wawa instead. Okay, that's good. The fire alarm went off at the Wawa. <laughs> Wait, which one did you go to? The one in North Bergen. Oh, the one on Tunnelly. I think so, yeah. Yeah, it's got that gas... Oh, no, no, what are we talking about? Like, not gas their station. gas station, but, like, the gas station, like, next door. So it's across the street from a Target. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, wow, that one. <laughs> had to wait for our fucking sandwiches, and uh, <laughs> would you like them extra crispy, <laughs> dude? I ate so much fucking spicy pork belly. <laughs> oh no, that's the worst, Dennis. That, I'm not that actually kidding. is the worst one. I'm not even joking, Dennis. My shit was red the next day. <laughs> Like, not even, like, not brownish red or anything, like, red. Like, fucking Mario ass hat, like... <laughs> I'm talking, oh, like, shy no. guys, you know, like, red. You, uh, you let out some fireballs, huh? <laughs> out your ass. Dude. I... And it's so good. You know, the thing is, I used to not be able to eat spicy pork belly at all. It was too mm -hmm. spicy for me the first times I went to that place. But I've eaten it so much because it's where my Smash friends go. It's where yeah, my yeah. Melee friends go. And it's literally where we're going next week. Mm. To the point where, like, fucking, I, I've eaten it so much to the point where the spice doesn't bother me at all anymore. Like, I actually have a higher spice tolerance now. Oh, that's great. How I love hearing that. exposed to that shit. Like, I literally used to, like, hardly be able to eat the spicy pork belly. It was spicy as fuck. And now, it's, like, my favorite thing there. Besides the, uh, mm, besides, the, besides the prime beef, besides the prime beef, which we are getting next week, if you haven't had it already, it's literally okay. the best cut. We're going to get, uh, place. we're going to get some ribeye. Uh, okay. Um, some bulgogi. Some bulgogi, yeah. Spicy uh, pork belly. And spicy pork belly, yeah. 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 I don't know, like, it's, <laughs> it's not so weird. I'm like, already planning on, like, what am I going to eat next week <laughs> like, when we get we'll, there. We'll figure it out. I just need yeah, to see yeah. the look on all your faces. When we get the uh, prime beef, if none of you have had it already. I'm not kidding. It's literally the best cut of meat I've ever had in my life. It's like fucking a campfire in your mouth. Oh, and also brisket. Oh, yeah, that brisket. I could. I don't know why I couldn't think of the word brisket. I, there was one off the top of my head that I couldn't think either. Mm. Thank you for reminding me of brisket. Yeah, there's there's a meta to Korean barbecue. It's like, oh, yeah. 
Cast Iron Pot is one least, of my favorite places in the world, man. At least I'm, all I'm you so can eat places. There. Yeah, especially all you yeah. can eat places. Cast Iron Pot is how you create a happy, a happy tunist. A happy tunist that can barely walk because his fucking gut is the weight of like a lead fucking a lead weight. In his Dude, a friend of mine literally had a beer while drinking. That's that insane. Well. I'm man. like literally because uh, beer fills you up like mad quick too. When, so when you look at him, it makes sense. Oh, okay. Okay, I feel you. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of red shit, uh, <laughs> the Mario movie is coming out next week. T minus seven days, Woo! or no? It said the eight fifth, days. right? Yeah, eight days. Uh, eight, so. Nine days, actually. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. So yeah, nine days. So basically, we're gonna call it a week, though. It's literally a week away. Like it's yeah. kind of nuts. Like because we. I don't know. Like ever since we even started this podcast, like we talked about it, we heard about it, saw the trailer, we got excited, put our thoughts into it, placed our bets. Now it's literally like you know just you know days away at this point. And I know like you know uh, I know you said it before, David. And like you know how much more can we beat this dead fucking horse until like we finally get to the episode where we actually talk about the damn thing? But I don't know. Like it's like. I know you even sent me that fucking meme of like Mario topping the box office, just fucking number one, just destroying everything. And I even told David, like, I just messaged him straight up, quote for quote, I can't wait to be proven right. And there is some, I mean, I think people are, maybe you did a little bit before, underestimate like how well this mo- movie's gonna do, at least like opening weekend and such, opening week and uh, maybe first like month or two and like just kind of overall gross some until like it's basically taken off like the box office but i i'm i think this is definitely gonna be like one of those um spectacle like kind of movies uh when it comes out i think it's doesn't have let's say like the same kind of built up hype that uh Endgame had or like Infinity War but I think for sure though like this the hype is there like it is pretty fucking strong like it's been strong ever since like that last trailer from a couple weeks ago and it went from at least the dialogue went from oh I hate Chris Pratt's voice like uh like this line sounds weird this and that to like you know now, like, there's not even a mention of that shit anymore at all. No. And everyone's just kind of saying that, like, they're going to, they can't wait to go opening weekend. They they just can't wait to go see it. And I, I for one, uh, am of the opinion that it's definitely going to be one of those movies that I cannot watch opening weekend. Just because of how much I'm going to fucking probably want to punch somebody. Like... I've been to two opening opening nights uh, for a movie. I for, one of them, I think, was one of the Pokemon movies. And I was a kid for that. So it's just like, you go to an opening night uh, for a movie when you're a kid. It's kind of like, it's kind of surreal in a way. Like, you know, it's just, everyone's just there, like, excited as you. And that, like, you know, we're just going to, like, we're going to watch the movie and enjoy. When you're an adult and you hear screaming children. You kind of wish you could go up to that parent and tell them, I wish you swallowed him. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Like, I wish, I wish I had the power to tell you to get the fuck out of here. I remember when I saw take your the kids Avengers. with you. I remember when I saw the Avengers and, like, there was this lady behind us who was so loud during the movie. And, like, in the scene where, like, Hawkeye tries to shoot Loki and Loki oh, yeah. grabs, grabs the arrow. She literally did, like, the most stereotypical, like, big black lady thing. She went, damn! <laughs> I'm like you. I'm like you. People aren't real. Holy shit! Come on, shut the fuck up. I, I like seeing movies in theaters in general when they're crowded is fucking awful. Like, it's weird though. I see what you're saying because like you see footage or like when people saw Endgame in theaters. Yeah, yeah. How deeply communal that was. Oh yeah. There's and some so nobody, like, no, yeah. hive mind type shit. Like everyone was just kind of like all hyped up on the hype. Like yeah, if that makes sense. Like they just yeah, we, were so excited. Like from we, the beginning and it's to just, end. It's crazy because we used to get beat up for liking that shit. Yeah. Now it's like if you don't like Marvel movies, now you get beat up. It was the same thing when Star Wars came out too. 
Like, at least no, the newer ones? No, it wasn't the same thing when Star Wars came out. Not as many people give a shit about Star Wars as they do fucking... No, I think, now. like, at least after Force Awakens and then once the shit started to kind of, like... Well, once the the factory that is Disney started to crank this shit out well, more and yeah. more. Like, everyone, like, who wasn't a Star Wars fan all of a sudden became a Star Wars fan. Okay, let me rephrase that then because, um... Let me rephrase that then because I do agree with you. Um... I feel like it was more communal among Star Wars fans, and there's just so many of them because it's like fucking, it's fucking Star Wars. Yeah, exactly. But Avengers, it's it's not even just like Marvel fans. Like normies love that shit. Yeah, like yeah. Thanos is like so ingrained in like he's pop in, culture. In, in, not, in, yeah. not even just pop culture, but he's ingrained in like fucking like dude. People from the hood like he love was those ingrained too now, dude. He literally defined almost a singular year of our life. Like, we saw, like, people just... Like, he became a meme overnight. They put he Thanos became... in fucking Fortnite. <laughs> He's in fucking Fortnite. Which, he became, uh, like, a public... Like, he became, like, a figure. A I, I mean, I suppose. He, like, yeah. When nobody even, like, knew who he was. Like, that's how huge that shit was. Yeah. And say what you will about Marvel movies, and especially say what you will about Marvel now. Mm -hmm. But, like, back then, you know, I mean, Hollywood just didn't know what to fucking do about these people. Did you watch the Oscars at all? No, not recently. Okay, good. Because they gassed the fuck up out of Top Gun. Like, the new Top Gun movie. And it's like, you watch, like, all these, like, you know, how they promote these dramas and this film represents this. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, when uh, we love it when, like, more movies, you know... We love it when more movies, like, cast, like, African-American stars, but it's not because we give a shit about black people. It's because, like, it makes us look like we give a shit about black people, yeah. and it all, which also makes us more money, blah, blah, blah. Gives blah. us some points with people. Like They gas it, up Top Gun so much at the Oscars, which makes no sense, considering <laughs> that a lot of the movies they promote are about, like, cultural change or dramas mm. or movies that actually change the times. Meanwhile, like, this as, is it, military propaganda. Exactly. We love this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, like everything, everywhere, all at once. Like, it, like this year's Oscars was huge about like new mm. Asian stars. Like the lady, oh, I forget her name because I didn't see the movie. Michelle Yeah, Michelle Yeoh, I think. Only best actress to ever win an Os Only best Asian actress to ever win. Only best a actress to ever <laughs> be won by an Asian. Sun's still out. That's why our brains still kind of yeah, like exactly. Catching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are. It's, it's gonna be. It's gonna be. It's running time now. It's gonna be summertime soon. Our brain know. is only running on fifty percent power. Don't even listen to our podcast in the summertime. <laughs> Cause then, like the sun's out and it's just hot as fuck in here. One and day, like, I'm... oh no, uh, I was just gonna say, like, one day I'm literally just gonna be uh, walking in, and I'm just gonna like wear like swim trunks and just look like I'm ready for the beach. When it's like I'm probably not gonna head to the beach like anytime he's just, soon. He's just getting ready for his pod for his podcast. Yeah, I'm just in the doing. summer mood, you know. Yeah. Either way, though, you want to know why they give a shit about Top Gun, which is supposedly like a very like normy, like dumb meathead action movie. I didn't even... I didn't think it was that. No, 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 no. Compared to the stuff they have at the Oscars, though. I mean, yeah, fine. But it's like, at the very least, like... Do you want to know why? Okay, go ahead. It's because Top Gun gets people to actually go to the theaters to see something that isn't Marvel. I mean, that is true. That's the actual reason. By, by the time of that movie's release... Marvel has... Marvel Hollywood. had a lot of stinkers. Yeah. Now, now, be, now it has a lot of stinkers now, and Hollywood actually kind of happy about that because for years Marvel had Hollywood by the fucking balls. Okay, that is fact. They were the yeah. only movies that anybody gave a shit about. Look at the top grossing movies of all time. Two of them are Avengers in the top yep. five. Why do you think they gas up Avatar and fucking like Top Gun so much? It's because it gets people to actually go oh. to the fucking theater. That and also like they. Everyone like they knows, even, yeah. like, everyone knows that Marvel movies are never going to be placed in the Oscars categories, like, ever. There's yeah. never going to be a fucking Oscar in our yeah, lifetime that any of those movies are ever going to be, of like, course not. on the Oscars. Hollywood and, hates them. I know. And that's why, like, I even like to think that, because, like, at least as far as their, like, institution goes. Because Hollywood as an institution is very much, like, they love to kind of portray themselves as, like, you know, we're, like, a big supporter of, like... I mean, we're not a supporter, but, like, we are a big proponent of the arts as far as, like, film goes. Yeah. We love it when people are get creative and, let's say, make a movie that, like, okay, maybe in a way we never really seen before. Everything Everywhere All at Once was probably the most unique thing that I've ever watched, like, in the last, like, maybe 10 years. 
and I re- and everyone still remembers when Scorsese was uh, I think he was asked or like he said that you know that sort of whole thing with Marvel movies I was is like bring not, that up yeah like he he's like he, he didn't really say that they're shit or like that they're bad in any way it's just kind of like they're in its own category and it's very much like a spectacle let's say compared to other things that he's made like he it's obviously two way cinema. different movies yeah he said they aren't they're not cinema. Cinema. that was that was what he quoted yeah and, and people were mad because just like oh why are you hating our marvel movies just because we all love them blah 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 and it's like no it's because they hate them because like if they make anything that's not them you people don't give a fuck yeah you know if they had them by the balls that's another one of the couple of reasons that i'm actually happy marvel sucks now you know, because we're entering like a sort of post woke. We're entering like a sort of post woke culture, yeah. If you would, and that sort of yo, Velma met- was this last straw on the camel's yeah, back, in my opinion. Exactly. I think everyone after they saw that, they just kind of like, yo, I'm kind of sick of this shit. Can y'all just make like a decent series that doesn't have to be all woke and preachy to me? I think Hollywood for is fuck's like, sake. Yeah, I think people are more and more people are starting to realize, and this is an opinion I've had for a very long time, actually. So I'm actually I actually feel validated to see like YouTubers Dude, starting to. Dude, you say and this I shit. both feel validated. We both felt this shit for the last like two years. Yeah, we talked about and this like I think in episode fucking fifty. I think of the podcast where we talked about like how Hollywood writes strong women and stuff. Oh yeah, and how I, I said like you know one. the character of Mulan being like the greatest female character ever written. Yeah, and then I said, and I. And I I still stand fucking by that. Yeah, by and then the way. I said that Hollywood has no idea how to write strong women because instead of just writing strong women, they see femininity so, as weakness. And we said strong. Just give a strong female character all the traits of a toxic man. We all we said like a strong and likable woman. And here's yeah. the thing: that is well, the it, one key thing that I, at least I kind of put a pin on all the time when it comes to let's say like kind of I guess dissecting like female characters that we've seen over the years. If she's not likable, I, I, like that's just it. Like that's just it for me. It's just you just wrote an unlikable bitch, which doesn't take that much effort, like at all. Yeah, like, like why? I, why is making a strong female character an asshole considered strength? I don't get it. If you make like a male character an asshole, you watch him and he's like, oh, he's a fucking asshole. We're not supposed to like this character. Understandable. But then when you give a woman that those same qualities the it just qualities seems worse. of a toxic it's, man it no, really it, seems it worse is, than the it dude it is fucking worse and do you want to know why because instead of being told we're not supposed to like this character we're told we're supposed to like them but that's changing now. that is why I gave Velma the benefit of the doubt when I first watched it I thought we were supposed to hate her but no it's literally literally just Mindy Kaling just being Mindy Fuck, Kaling just being Mindy <laughs> Kaling it's literally just a self insert and just it's completely unself aware like, if a character is an asshole and they're supposed to be an asshole that's, and we're not supposed to like them, that's great. But that it is worse, Dennis. And it's specifically because of what you just said. When a male character is an asshole, oh, we're supposed to hate them. Makes sense. That's the point. But well, when it's woman, like... When a woman character is an asshole in that same way, like, one example, Brie Larson and fucking Captain Marvel yeah. or whatever. Nobody what, likes her. She's incredibly <laughs> unlikable. But we're supposed to like her because her being an you, asshole but is you know the considered thing? strength. But that's the thing. Why? Like, the, like the, that makes no fucking that's sense. The, Why is depends. femininity considered weakness? Like, it literally does the opposite of what the feminists fucking want, and yet they eat that shit up. It depends, It makes though. no fucking sense. It depends on their their brand of asshole. Because it's like, if a guy is an asshole because, for one, he's really good at his job, that's at least a pill you have to swallow. Because it's like, Okay, but this guy knows his shit better than everybody. And off the top of my head, the character that I think of, um, that I could think of that I could compare with that is House. From, you know, obviously, like, everyone knows yeah. the series and such. Hugh Laurie, fucking love you. But, um, uh, you know, he plays like a straight up, in my opinion, um, I, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure if he has, like, I, I remember, or not. I remember that show. He, yeah. um, He's like the like the know it all doctor. He knows everything better than everyone else. He's just like a doctor on another tier in and of itself. And this guy's like fucking just a wizard when it comes to the scalpel. I don't it's know, like Ron Swanson like walking yeah. into the Home Depot. You, you, are, you are, <laughs> and I know, do it basically. I, I know, I know more than you. And exactly. he, he basically, he's that kind of character. And, and like, also, at half the time in the show, the worst part is that he does. Yeah. yeah, which th- that's why at the very least, like Ron's way more likable in that sense because it's like for one, he knows his shit, and he is. 
righteous about it in that, like, look, I just know this better than you. He's just stating a fact. <laughs> like, you just can't, like, dispute it no matter how well, how you try to, like, spin it. And in the case of House, if you met this guy in real life, you'd want to punch him. It's very, it's been, it's been said, like, multiple times throughout the series that, like, this guy is probably, arguably, like, the most unlikable fuckhead, like, you've ever met. And, like, but at the same time, we do love him because, like, it's, that's just not the only side of him. At the end of the day, he is still a doctor. He's still helping people. He's he just does, helping them um, in his own brand of, his in his own fucking way, you know? Yeah. He's very unapologetic. He just tells you the way it is. And he's very much just kind of like an honest person. A lot of people can kind of don't take honesty like very well, just in general. And in a way, I can't really blame them for that. But it's at the same time, like, you know, facts are facts at the end of the day. They don't care about your feelings. If this guy says that you're probably you may you might have died like fucking two weeks ago if you didn't get the shit removed because of X and X thing that you did and you're an idiot for doing that, then well I'm sorry that's just the way it is. Like, yeah. what do you want me to do about it? It's like a scene where he picks apart an anti vaxxer and like in that scene you're supposed to like him. It, like they throw in stuff like that. But another reason it can be satisfying for him he could be a character that doesn't learn and as a result it becomes like i guess a sort of character study yeah exactly he has no development like whatsoever he just thinks like oh the way i am is fine if a character is like that like an asshole and he just does not change or he does not see the consequences of his actions for being an asshole in that way in a malicious sort of way then obviously yeah no one's actually gonna like him the audience doesn't like him the character you're fucking... not supposed to either yeah. it's supposed to be and like here's what this guy is doing wrong this is why his psyche is fucked up and take it now, as a lesson to yourself let's put that let's get a woman in that driver's seat of being that really awful shitty fucking character we'll put right? it on captain marvel again because captain that's marvel. what modern strong female characters aren't allowed to do learn or be likable <laughs> they're not allowed to learn well, you don't understand. Them not being likable, Dennis, is a byproduct of that. It's because this woman is strong, she does what she does, and if you have any problem with it, you're you're the asshole. When a protagonist doesn't learn, when there's no character growth, when there's no con when there's not something they have to overcome, it's it's empty. It's vapid. But then empty, vapid, Marvel, and it's also like a waste of two hours that you just sat through. And a like waste of money. Shit. But then for some fucking reason, when these characters are not likable. We're told it's we're my fucking, fault. Yeah, we're told we're <laughs> sexist. Like we're not. I'm the that. problem. A, it's my example, problem that your a, character is a shithead. Like <laughs> a beautiful example of the opposite of this. First Wonder Woman movie. This is the first Wonder Woman movie. She's strong as fuck. She will beat your ass into fucking submission. She's also kind of dumb though. Face. In the real world, like she just doesn't know like what she's doing half the she time when she's out in the real world. Yeah, yeah, but there's an ex she's lived on an island isolated I don't know, that's what from I mean. society. That's her what makes life. us that's what makes her relatable. Even yeah. though she's a fucking god of a like a goddess of a woman, right? Like she yeah. could lift a building and kill you with her bare hands, but it's just like her being this like unbelievably goofy fucking person, like literally you know, fish out of water story. She has no idea what the fuck she's doing half the time whenever she's like out there in like yeah. our world. And that's that's Dude. fun to see. Oh. Exactly. That that movie wasn't afraid that her being a fish out of water would make all women look stupid. Yeah. Like, no, there's a reason for it. They don't see so, femininity as weakness. Thing. Like, she's yeah. still herself. She's curious about the world. She yeah. still acts sort of quote-unquote feminine, but it doesn't mean she's weak. And that's what all the fucking Marvel shit, the new Marvel shit needs to learn from. Fucking She-Hulk, Captain Marvel, all this dog shit that they're releasing. It's not... People say, well, we say it's bad because you don't like women. It's like, no, it's because those aren't actually strong women. Why do you associate making a strong woman by making her more like a man, like a toxic man? They represent everything you hate in a dude. So why does suddenly applying that to a woman make them strong? You're basically saying that what a strong woman is, is the type of guy that you literally hate. How is that feministic? People who are against that are more feministic than you are. That's why I hate women who fucking defend that shit. It's like, the, you, the Marvel's got you by the fucking balls. It's the but worst. not anymore, it, though. Not yeah, anymore, though. It sucks. That's, like prior that to shit's even, been shaken a she lot. She-Hulk was actually a well-beloved character. Like, in what made Jen different from Bruce, she, like, learned to enjoy being a Hulk. 
the benefits and the disadvantages of yeah. it or whatever. Like, she was, like, in the comics, she was, like, fucking Deadpool, where she broke the fourth wall, which they mm. apply to that movie as well. Except in this, they're like, oh, she has to be a modern woman, which means she can't have any flaws whatsoever. She has to be perfect, <laughs> and she has to be the one, the one with all the funny quips making fun of everybody. Because Dude, they're not even, even funny quips, Because though. if like, she shows even a single shred of weakness, that means all women are weak, and we can't have that. It's, so about then the, it's about getting the bottom dollar of people who are stupid enough to buy into that shit. You know it's what's why so it doesn't funny, work though? in a fucking post-war co woke culture anymore, which, like you they, said, is why everyone hated <laughs> Velma and why Velma is now the lowest fucking rated thing going on that back, fucking website. Going back to Marvel real quick, right? Like, y like us going off about like all these like just terrible fucking characters that so happen to be female. Like, they're just basically like just terrible fucking people in general, right? Mm -hmm. But then, like, we... And there's one... There was one character in particular that had a bit of a, um... Like, she was probably one of the only few that, at the very least... I did not like her in the beginning, but as, like, the movies went on, like, she became way more complicated. We kind of delved into her past. Uh, Which character Black again? Widow. Black, I thought I figured that. Because especially by about. Endgame, what does she do? She fucking sacrifices herself so they can get the stone she literally gives up her own life so that everyone could succeed in their mission mm -hmm. and to save the world she did that willingly and at the same time like you know we also heard from way at least in the previous movies like just more of like kind of the shit that she went through and uh I didn't see Black Widow the movie, so I didn't. I don't know what else more backstory they had about her in that. I heard, I heard it was mid. Yeah, it was mid. Yeah, I heard it was just kind of like, eh, like whatever. And I stopped watching Marvel shit forever ago. So. Like, dude, the thing was, was that like, and I know was, I'm not missing out on anything. At that's this what point, I mean. So. Like, cause I've still yet to see anything that touches anything from Endgame's phase of the MCU. I've yet to see anything that like that touches a lot of that stuff. Like I think in our heart of hearts, we all knew Endgame was the beginning of. The was this the thing? Endgame is the end is in the fucking name, and like I think we just constantly like associate that with with like kind of Marvel because. Hey, remember when we used to be <laughs> the king? Wait, you let, guys me let me finish. Let me finish. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me sorry. let me finish. Because this is like we watched Endgame and. Everyone in their heart of hearts, by the end of the last, like, 15 minutes of that movie, right? It felt like the end. It felt like everything, at least story-wise, like, just the general story, was finally wrapped up. The universe is fucking saved. Arguably, the greatest threat that we've ever faced is finally dead and gone. Our loved ones, like, uh, well, not really, no. Well, Tony died in a, in a few and such, but at the very least, like... You know, a lot of the themes, it being like sort of protecting the future or, you know, uh, just even like heroism in general, like how far are you willing to go? Also, you willing to also fuck up time? I mean, that's not really like a theme, but it's like the, the people who died and like the people who also sacrificed themselves, like, you know, for the success of the mission and like for just like to win to win the fight like tony sacrificing himself like i really like i know it was like i think a lot of people kind of sort of predicted that in my opinion right. that like one of them was probably gonna have to like basically sacrifice themselves we thought that uh i keep saying scarlet witch but uh black widow was gonna be like the only one no like the guy who basically started well not really but like the one who basically set like took had the mcu take off like Tony Stark, like yeah. Iron Man, him dying, that was the most appropriate thing I like ever. Full circle. It was it like was a fu it was literally, yeah, like it was fucking amazing. Like the conclusion of it all. They and should have had a scene where he's where he talks to Jensen in the afterlife. Oh like, yeah, that, I know that, yeah, exactly. Like, I heard that. that. They dropped the ball, like not doing they, that. They they also they had that like weird deleted scene where like he sees his um he sees his daughter like older. And like Aww. he talks to her, yeah, like and just says like uh, you know, has that whole like Thanos and Gamora uh, conversation. Is like, did you do it? Yes. Yes. What did it cost you? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like kind of a little, like a nice conversation between like Tony and his daughter, and like kind of just 
talking about like you know he, he almost kind of doesn't accept that he died which is really funny because he's just like wondering like what the fuck am I <laughs> like, he just wakes up as if it's just like another Tuesday he's like mm, yeah. where, where am I we're just in another dimension huh okay alright guess that's just uh you know it's so normal for like the Marvel guys now it's just like oh I'm in another dimension hey, it's another Tuesday nothing surprises them anymore either no. It's it's so odd, like, you know, everyone thought, like, at least going into the multiverse was gonna be, like, you know, a crazy fucking thing, and, like, you know, I watched Doctor Strange, I was not blown away. Not one bit. At all. And even the audience is, I, that's why I'm saying, like, you know, and everyone kind of has talked about it before, there is major Marvel burnout. Like, ever since, like, I think, um, I mean, Ant-Man was, by the time Ant-Man's release, everyone was already feeling it. Everyone was already feeling it. I like heard the Ant last Man two was movies, too. Yeah, like the last two movies. Uh, was it Doctor Strange and whatever the fuck, whatever. Spider-Man? Like the other movie. No, not Spider Man. Spider Man was great. Um, it was like it was um. This see, we year. can't even think of it because it's so exactly fucking, yeah. It's so fucking forgettable. It's so forgettable. It was like fucking, yeah. Um, um, the one with like the fucking sex scenes or something. <laughs> That's, so, that's oddly specific. I can't even. I can't even remember. Like uh, Shang, Shang. Oh, something. Thor, Thor as well. Uh, Thor. There's the, oh, Thor, which I yeah. heard that was ass. I heard yeah. it sucked. It, it, was, it was. And they took literally bad. one of the most serious villains the MCU ever had and just made it all about comedy. It's like just this shitty comedy again. Like, dude, people are finally getting sick of it, and I'm actually so happy that Joss Whedon type comedy. <laughs> like, I think it's finally like run its course now. In yeah. my opinion, like um. A Guardians of the Galaxy was the only one that, like, I consistently, like, actually really liked. I searched up latest Marvel movies and Black Adam came up. <laughs> what, what the fuck, Google? <laughs> Google How do you, you not know get, your shit? Yeah, but you gotta get your shit together, Google. Was, the fuck? I was about to say. Like, I can't even fucking remember. No, these are, like, the upcoming Oh, ones. Black Panther 2. That was yeah. also, like... Eh, you know? It I wasn't didn't... bad. It didn't blow me away either, though. That was the thing. It was just... It was okay. It was a... It was a good movie. I and also, like not movie, to mention, like, you know, cap, yeah. it's like Chadwick Boseman, like, dying. Yeah. Like, that movie was... That, not, not that it was fucked, but it was, like, it set him back. Like, the guys who made that movie. Like, him dying. Because... Mm-hmm. Eternals. That was the yeah. one that I couldn't fucking... Oh, no, yeah, that was an also, also another one. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> it Eternal, was like Eternals ahead. was the one that we were trying to think of, which that movie I also heard was bad. Shang-Chi I heard was great. That yeah. I didn't see. Actually, it was actually not bad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. It's like one decent one out of like four or five like average mid to stinkers. That's a pretty bad like record for uh for 2023, if you know what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, it's like, like that's Netflix. pretty bad. It's like Netflix. They're just picking up from the barrel. And then you had No Way Home, which was like the best fucking movie. People were comparing mm. that one to fucking Endgame, which... Uh, I mean, honestly... you, I mean, two other Spider-Men from the other universe, from the other multiverses? I think that was that was like real hype. That was no way that movie was gonna fucking fail. Yeah, like, either way, these characters learn things though. I don't know why they just. I, well, I mean, I know why they don't, but like they don't apply that same basic hero's journey. Character has to overcome something mm-hmm. or or learn something or, or be flawed. Have or just be <laughs> flawed. I don't. They don't apply that to women because Disney just. Ever since, like, the fucking, like... I'm not gonna say, like, oh, everything is woke now. I don't want to sound like a basic old white guy with a podcast. But, like, you know, ba- ever since... We're all Disney- annoyed of it. We're yeah, all annoyed. Since, like, yeah, we're all annoyed because, like, people, even, like, sociologists and, like, you know, communication specialists are, like, talking about this now. We're starting to enter a post-woke culture. Thank fuck, too. Holy and shit. And it's why this shit isn't working. It's why Velma, like, people wouldn't shut the fuck up about Velma. A couple of years ago, I feel like a lot more people would have liked Velma. I don't think it would have been good. I still think a lot of people would have hated it, but I don't think... No, the people been as... who mattered will have uh, all criticized it the yeah. same way that we have. But it then would not they'll... have been as universally yeah. hated as it became. Because it's about a... It's about this fucking... Pardon my Dennis word here, but like total bitch of a character <laughs> who doesn't learn anything and is just horrible to everybody around her and blames her problems on everything but herself. People don't want to fucking watch that! Yeah. People and don't want to see that. And I and always... No, but, and then you fucking oh, yeah, criticize right. it, and it has nothing... And you fucking criticize it, and like, no, you just hate women. I hate that shit. Can I, I also, hate can that I add, fucking shit. Can I add something God. real quick? Can I add something oh, yeah, real quick? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. And go ahead. I always bring it back to this. If you met this person in real life, would you like them? Just ask that question. And that'll tell you whether or not that this character is in any way... 
likable in any way because people underestimate how important that is to a character if you can't get people on the character side about and let's say like just about like let's say anything that they do right not that like no character is like uh perfect right but it's just like if you could get them on their side like if you get the audience on their side then that's for one good storytelling and then number two you wrote a very well-written character that i am sorry to say most people just have no idea how to fucking write anymore and it's if we're hard. just gonna and, it's, and it's if we, not easy no exactly and i know it's hard but it's like, like that's the thing like we get it we know it's hard but it's just like why is it that like none of like at least these writers from like the last like let's say three years have tried to change that it's not until like now the news is starting to say that oh now we're kind of entering this post woke uh, kind of era in our media where everyone's just kind of getting sick and tired of see, having this shit thrown at thrown at their faces right like why is it now then because here's the thing everything is always a trend and this was also nothing but a trend for the last like three years it was mm-hmm. popular it made you money and it got people talking because like hey they're writing a strong female character or at least that's how they like to advertise it when in reality there is like a very much an unlikable bitch like and we have to basically sit here for an hour and 40 praising this bitch, like saying that, oh my God, yeah, she just does no wrong. When in reality, if you met this person in real life, you would call her a fucking <laughs> right off the fucking bat. <laughs> Let's apply that to another show with a man. My favorite show that literally inspired me to want to be a writer. Archer. Literally my favorite I literally was show. thinking the exact same show. Yeah. <laughs> Archer. And that show came out in a time where writing asshole characters as protagonists was still very trendy. It's not as trendy yeah. anymore because way too many people try to do it and they replicate it very poorly. It's a dead very horse now poorly. at this point. It's a very dead horse now at this point. Archer, though. Oh, my God. And I've said this on the show plenty of times, too. Me and Dennis both have. If you knew a motherfucker like that. <laughs> like that. <laughs> In real life, you would fucking despise him. You would tell your friends about him, about this horrible interaction I yeah. had with this, like, horrible person today. Over and over again. Understandably so. In the written form, when you watch them, they become lovable in that way. Why? Mm-hmm. Because the medium is the message. Number one fucking rule of fucking communications. Right And there. writing we, in general. Wa- and writing, well. Mm. Uh, you watch them, and... If a character is an asshole and they don't learn, it's because they're supposed to be a character study. Like the Joker, for instance. Mm-hmm. That movie, when people went to see it, like, where is your fan? Where's Batman? Like, it's not, <laughs> obviously it's not about that. The Joker, when you see that mm. movie, it's a character study about Arthur yeah. Fleck and, like, how he was driven to madness. Like, it says this about society. Mm-hmm. We are living in a motherfucking society. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. All that stuff, right? And you get like, what you fucking deserve. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. <laughs> But we're not getting what we deserve now because Marvel's giving a shit. (laughs) So basically, Archer... I mean, Archer does grow in his own ways. I mean, the show's on its fucking 14th season now. So the character has grown. But for very much... uh, As the seasons go on, there are some times where he doesn't. And it's supposed to be a little bit of a character study as to why he's fucked up. As to why he's the Mm -hmm. way he is. Because of the way he was raised. Because of, like, how horrible his mom was. Blah, blah, blah. The fact that why... The fact that he's an alcoholic. All this stuff, Mm -hmm. right? And, and it can still feed. be done, in a, and also a, a sexual deviant. It explains why he's the way he is. You can do that to a woman protagonist too, like Inside Job. Look at Reagan. Reagan is such a beloved character. Reagan's fucked in the head. She had a fucked up childhood, dude. <laughs> Are you kidding? Like she had a fucked up ass childhood with her dad doing the shit that he did in the government, yeah. like blah, all that stuff. The pressure that's mounted on her shoulders, like in her job and whatnot. But she's not unlikable because she works to overcome it and she doesn't treat people horribly or whatever. She's a Mm -hmm. flawed character. Stop being afraid to make fucking female characters fucking flawed. Also self-aware. Your protagonist needs to be flawed. This is literally like day fucking three of any screenwriting class you will take. Don't be afraid to write a per- Don't stop being fucking afraid to write a character with flaws. Everybody wants to write a perfect protagonist because they write what they know and people base protagonists on themselves. And that's another reason why Velma is such a fucking travesty. Because that show's literally a self-insert. She's an unlikable, horrible character. But yet, for whatever reason, we're supposed to 
like her and think she's funny. It's why those shows are so unbelievably not self-aware. And when they rely on meta humor like that. It's why Captain Marvel and all this new Marvel shit is the same way. And why Wonder Woman isn't. Just stop applying the same traits that you would to a toxic man to a woman. And masquerading it as feminism. Those people do that because it's cheap, lazy, and they want your fucking money. They don't give a yeah, fuck exactly, about yeah. women's struggles or anything like that. They don't give a fuck. They want your money. And I'm going to say one more thing here. It's like, mm -hmm. it's from a video that I'm going to link you that I actually watched about this. And again, I know I'm starting to sound like a fucking... If I sound like a bitter, middle-aged white dude to you, <laughs> I want you to be self-reflective. Because one, I am 26. Two, I am very much not a conservative in any regard, I, I lean more liberally than anything else. Take it that, take it that way. Because it's just, it lets you know how fucking ingrained, the, like, a lot of this new shit is. It's why DreamWorks is fucking better than Disney. I'll say it a million times over. I mean, look, here's, we, here's a we, comment here. This person says, yeah, and I'm only cutting you off because okay, yeah, you're going to want to hear this. One of my favorite female heroes is Mulan. The original, in parentheses, the original <laughs> animation, not the latest. <laughs> Save it, <Somewhere> China! <laughs> Dude, holy shit. I, I like her because she's doing that not for the fame and glory or wanting to change the world, but simply because of her father. If she's not doing it, her family will fall apart. Caring and doing it for the family is one of the traits that make a feminine heroine. That's a great example. I think that's one of the biggest things. Generally, fe feminine traits include can include caring and nurturing. Mulan is powerful, but not in a conquering way. As so many, like, modern women have to be written to be perceived as strong. Like, they're literally being given the traits of, like, our, the fucking conquistadors. <laughs> which people are starting which is to just, cancel now because, like, we're canceling dead people. Which is just, like, take, take, take. That's, like, the fucking, like, at least qualities that a lot of these writers beforehand. Like, that's the stuff that they wanted to kind of, like, I guess, push forward. It's just Yeah, like, we're literally being taught I'm gonna that take because I'm an asshole. And yeah. you're gonna do nothing about it. Yeah, we're and literally being taught that manifest destiny is bad. But when you apply that to modern women, it's... Strong. <laughs> Bro, I, Matt, yo, imagine Christopher Columbus was Christophina Colum Columbia. <laughs> yeah, makes her a better. Like, like, what, like, if she did the exact same shit that Christopher Columbus, like our Christopher Columbus, did, does it make her any less of a monster <laughs> than what he was? No, like, but it makes. It why makes does her it? A, no, but it makes her a hashtag Bro, girl boss. Like, I love. Pe I love how people think like that. A pussy pass is like somehow fucking valid. It's like, oh, I have a pussy, so therefore, like, oh, I'm allowed to be like this. It's like, what? In what fucking universe? <laughs> Are you fucking for real? <laughs> it's starting to affect the dumb people, man. Not, not to mention, from that. and going back to, like, how now we're in the present day, and, like, now, like, all of us are just kind of fucking fatigued this shit. I'm, like, glad that it's finally dying, because, like, it only took, like, I mean, that's the thing. It kind of goes both ways, like, because... Hollywood was only going to keep making this shit if people if people kept eating it up. And yeah. for a while, people were. So this is also on people, in general. Because, like, y'all ate this shit up. That's why I stopped and, watching Velma. And, like, yeah, like, you just didn't reject this, like, sooner. And it's not until, what, a terrible fucking HBO series. Uh, and I guess, like, what, the last, like, couple of Marvel movies, like, She-Hulk, like, you took that, it took that level of terrible... For everyone to realize this shit. Which already kind of just then goes back to like, well, like, I just hate fucking people. And, you know, to a certain extent, I kind of do. But I'm not like, because I, at the same time, I'm a half and half on this because it's like, on the other half, I know that there are plenty of people who watch this podcast, all eight of you, that, uh, you know, clearly, like, there's at, more than eight. <laughs> at, who, at the very least, like, you, y'all know, like, kind of what is, like, decent writing or at the very least like you know and like likable characters you reject the velmas you reject the captain marvels but again like minus you guys everyone else is a terrible person because they subscribe to this fucking terrible shit and in a way again i'm not saying that's all their fault but they are at least 40 percent at fault for letting this shit literally run as long as it did as as long as it did because again hollywood's only going to go off of ticket sales yep. they only like to see if it made money and if they see like a terrible toxic character like velma like do well in the box office well fucking shit let's make more because well it's 
it's working. That's what they're gonna do. They chase trends. That's what it's yeah, about. Exactly, it's about yeah, exactly. It's about chasing trends. How everyone fucking does not realize like how reactive an industry uh Hollywood is more than they are proactive. In, like, at large, at least. There's plenty yeah. of guys that have made shit that obviously breaks the mold, like Scorsese and uh, Tarantino and a bunch of others. Like, they could give us a fuck about this shit. And they could also... They have the luxury of doing that because, for one, they are Scorsese and Tarantino. <laughs> like, they could do whatever the fuck they want. They have that, like, uh, gravitas at that point in their career where, like, look, I can, I'll make whatever the fuck I want. And you will shut the fuck up and let me do it the way I want to do it. And Hollywood's gonna say... Even though Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was mm, not one of his better films. No, obviously not. It wasn't his better films. But mm, let's go. I, I liked it at the very least. It was okay. It was definitely not like the best. Like I even I'll even go on to say that Pulp Fiction is not even his best work. For a time I thought it was, but I think Django is probably like th- the best Tarantino movie that I've watched. Like Maybe not bar none. It's up there. That's the thing. It's like it's it's so t- hard to pick between his movies. They're all so fucking good. That's what I mean. Yeah, like it's it's like on the number one spot, but like barely among like three others. So it's like you know can't really say much about that in that respect. But have you seen the Hateful Eight? No, I have not actually. It is the most fucking Tarantino-y Tarantino <laughs> movie you will ever see in your life. I mean, is that a that's a good thing, right? It is a good thing, but, like, just, again, there's so much fucking dialogue, absurdly violent. <laughs> and, um, all, all Western, uh, shudder and shoot, shoot. Yeah, it's like, yeah. It was such a great fucking movie, though, but... And I feel like, you know, it's another reason why a movie like Puss in Boots did as well as it did. Because Puss in Boots was just such a traditional hero's journey movie. Went back to its roots, and everyone loved it for it. it would, that's like, what made it so refreshing. That's what the movie was. It was refreshing. I feel like it still would have done well a few years ago, but maybe even not as well as it did now. On top of the fact that it was as strong as it was. Came out at a great time. It did come out at a great time as well. Like, just... Like, could not have picked... I mean, the fucking box office Executives, can we we, um, fucking do that frame rate (laughs) shit that, like, they did in the the Spider-Man Amazing Spider-Verse, yeah. How much... How much... um, Dude. How much money did that movie that, make? When I found out what that budget was, it shocked me. Dude, how uh, a- how much money did Spider Verse make? Three hundred and eighty four point three million. Yeah, do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> Here's the money. Just do it. <laughs> Take our money. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> Fucking ugh. We didn't talk it's... about Mario at all, but I'm fine. I'm actually happy this. Nah, this I think went, yeah. I, I actually really like this conversation. And here's the thing, though, too, Peach. Already is following that trend that we're talking about. Not like um like the toxic female, but it's just kind of like Peach. From what we have at least seen of the trailer, she's just a likable badass. She's not yeah. like the de- the fucking damsel in distress that we've known her like in all the games. And she literally good. is about to fight. She knows that I'm about to face a dragon turtle fuck you monster, <laughs> and I'm about to like and I may have some flame and shit, <laughs> but giant fuck you alligator turtle like. She's still willing to square up with this guy. Yeah. Like, holy shit. Like, they at gave the very Peach least, a like, that's spear. pretty... Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Was it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's also a sign that... I mean, the movie's not out yet, but it's also mm. a sign that, like, you can make a female character like that girl boss type while also not removing the femininity from her because femininity yeah, is Yeah, just making now. her likable. Like, yeah, that's why I'm actually glad. Like, you said it a couple of months ago, actually. You mm. literally said, I'm happy that Luigi's the one that gets kidnapped instead. Because for, like, young girls just to watch Peach be in the same spot they'd in the roll entire their fucking eyes. movie. They would, uh, and they'd be fucking right to. Yeah. Like, to see, like, the character that's supposed to, like, represent you a little bit on screen, like, like being that boring. And, like, they literally this don't do anything in this movie because they can't. <laughs> I'd be bored as fuck watching Peach do mm. that, too. And they understand that, like, we're not, he- we're not sitting here saying that representation doesn't matter. I think it very much matters. Yeah. Very much so. But to Especially an extent, these, like, to, it's young- got levels to it. Like, yeah, especially you know, for these young brown, these young brown and these young Asian and these young black kids who don't have, for the longest time, didn't have people to look up to. Mm-hmm. Only difference is that other companies do it authentically. Disney just tries to fucking force it, and they and that's why yeah, a lot of the shit they do so is manufactured. so inauthentic. Like it's, it's so, so manufactured. manufactured. This will get like the uh, minorities that we don't give a fuck about to come see mm-hmm. our movie. Also, please buy our park tickets. <laughs> I'm so upset. I'm literally and our timeshares, please, now. please. And we need to fill these hotels. Yeah. We need to fill these hotels. <laughs> Yeah, and so, ugh, that's, it's, 
at the very least, in conclusion, yeah. we're kind of tired of that phase of Hollywood. We're glad that it's fucking over. And at the very least, the la- the next couple of movies that we're going to be watching show, and-, and that we've seen already, have already proven that, look, that wasn't the way to go. At least not in a writing sense. I mean, for whatever made them money, obviously, yeah, they're going to do whatever made them money. Like, I'm not faulting them for that. But it's like, for us as the consumer, we're a bit fatigued. Yeah. You know? And like, Puss in been- Boots. Puss in Boots is basically a Latin like- protagonist. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and then at the same time, it's like, look, you ever, like, you know, was with a bitch or, like, with anybody and you're, like, you've just been fucking for, like, seven to eight times? It's like, after the eighth time, you're kind of tired, aren't you? <laughs> you're kind of like, look, like, I don't, like, I, look, my, babe, my, my dick is going, <laughs> like, I, I had nothing, <laughs> I had nothing left in it for you. I have nothing in there left, like, at all. That's us. We've just been fucked. We're, we're like, that's the thing. We're the one that's getting fucked. We've been fucked seven to eight times. Now we're just tired of it. We're just like, look, I need a break. For fuck's sake, I need a breather. I need to drink some water or something. I need to fucking literally rest because you literally fucked me like a fucking, like, just beast. Like, and now I'm just, I got nothing left in for you. Like, that's how we feel. We just feel like we've been fucked. Like, fucked. Fucked. <laughs> like, it was not. And after the fourth, fifth time, it just got tiring. And then after that, it just got annoying. And then after that, it's just got, it just became, I don't want to do this anymore. We just don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> like, it's in conclusion. We do not want it anymore. And as part of We that need something new. <laughs> as part of that in conclusion, I can't wait to see all, like, the new characters that will become staples in the film world that are young Thank black. Fuck, yeah. That are young black, young brown, young Asian people to represent them. Because if they're done kids, well. These kids, like, cry, like, when they meet the mm. actors and shit. Like, they have somebody to look up to. And I never had to deal with that because I'm fucking mm. white, you know? <laughs> and um, it, that's important. I'm not sitting mm. sitting here saying representation doesn't matter. But y'all need to learn how to do it authentically because, like, the quality is starting to dip. And it's becoming forced and it changes the culture in a negative way. So, Disney, watch a lot of your old shit. Watch Mulan to remember how to write a strong female protagonist. Marvel, go watch Wonder Woman, please. And, um, everybody, single person watching this podcast, do not, for a single fucking second, or for any of your shitty little YouTube content, no matter how many views it's gonna get, watch season two of Velma. <laughs> Don't do it. Because that's the important one. Drop the it's a parasite. Velma is a parasite. You cannot the feed it. fact for you right here. Velma was gonna get a second season regardless, and the reason for that is because animation takes way longer to make, so they start making season mm-hmm. two before it gets greenlit. Otherwise, if it gets picked up for a second season, it's not gonna come out for, like, two years. Yeah. So if you really want Velma to stop... Don't or to watch die. Se- just want it to die. Yeah. Like, just don't watch, don't season, watch two. season two. That's like, the actual one that's important to not give clicks to. I mean, that's, why I, that's why I said, like, it's kind of like a parasite. Like, you can't feed it. Just let it starve. Like, it's, like if you re- if you remove its food, it will not fucking like basically just live in general. Because that's what a parasite is. Like that's what the show is too. If you want it to die, that's what you got to do. Just basically like don't just don't watch it. Flat out, just period. All twenty seven of you, just do not fucking watch it. For the love of God. Did you Please. pull up like the uh? Did you pull up the anchor analytics? No, not now. Okay, that's just that, that's just like a number that I always just, I always keep it below fifty. Like <laughs> it comes to like <laughs> yeah, a lot of the latest ones have been above fifty. So I know, yeah, at least the one with Joji and everything. So and the, I feel as if that was just the, because and of the, the Puss and Boots one. Yeah, and the Puss and Boots one, yeah. I think honestly it was just because of like the the hashtags. But but yeah, I think that's uh, yeah. We're, that we're is tapped. our thoughts. Um, about all this shit. I mean, we're gonna talk about the Mario movies a little bit more, but, I mean, like, again, like, as I said, what's more to be said at this point? Like, we're gonna watch it next week, like, like, like the rest of you, and then yep. we're just gonna... We're gonna enjoy ourselves. Yeah, and what, what I wanted to talk about was that, uh, IMDB leak, but it could very well be fake, so what's the point? Yeah, because, I you know, I told David, like, IMDB is the Wikipedia of movies. It just like, looks like the kind of thing that would be real, but, you know, it's too late to speculate about But that's point. the thing. Like, that's kind of stuff that, like, they wouldn't just put up on IMDb. Is this, like, that would then ruin, like, you know, if they actually did do that, like, and if, let's say, Illumination actually did do that, like, just thinking about it, like, you're going to ruin the surprise. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. I don't know if it was Illumination or somebody else, but whatever. 
that is going to do it for today's episode of the Double D Experience. I feel good. This is the power of no sunlight. (laughs) Do not listen to this podcast in the summer. Just don't. It's already going to be too hot in the rooms and me and Dennis are going to be fucking fatigued. Yeah. Then you might even hear like a fan in the background and I'm going to have to say apologize in advance because look, it gets sweaty as fuck in here. <laughs> oh, that's a good point actually with your microphone, how it picks up sound in the background. That's actually a little disconcerting. I'll just I'm have not... to like, just put a disclaimer in the middle of the video. It's like, not even sorry. that. Just as long as your mic is like functioning properly, like is like you make sure the settings are right beforehand and it's not doing that in and out thing. It should be fine. I'll just mm. be able to get rid of the background. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Yeah. 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 Uh, here's a plugs. Double D Powd on Twitter. At the Double D Experience 21 on Instagram. We really should put, like, just Double D Pod for Instagram as well, I feel. I know you... Do, I mean, are, are you married to the name the Double D Experience 21? Yeah. Okay. I just think it's kind of long. But you came <laughs> up with it, so it's special. Oh, if anything, we could maybe change it to DDE. Maybe. Yeah. Something a little bit more, like, kind of rolls off the tongue. Only if you're okay with that, because I feel bad because you came up with that name. Which is probably why it's so shit. <laughs> I love it when you uh, roast, roast make fun me, of me. I'll roast me, daddy. Um, yeah, uh, we're on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, a million different platforms, including one that I don't even remember the name of, but like it, it apparently like Anchor distributes it to even more or podcasts <laughs> for Spotify now, as it's officially called. Mm. Um, we're on YouTube, youtubecom slash Natunas. Subscribe. Uh, I make video essays once on a blue moon as well uh <laughs> like like the video comment on the video subscribe uh let us know in the comments what you think about everything we said about hollywood not knowing how to write strong women and uh what you're looking forward to most in the mario movie and we will see you next week after the movie releases and me and dennis both get dumped because our girls now hate us because apparently we talked about how much we hate women <laughs> because we don't like marvel women which means we hate all women because marvel women represent all women now for some fucking reason well, I, for one, actually do not. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself, David. I hate them all. I hate them all. <laughs> we love you all. Imagine. Oh, my God. We love you guys. Bye-bye. Bye.